Well, yesterday was Super Tuesday, and it looks like on the Republican side, briefly, because I really don't think it matters that much, although many people do, Trump uh, won big, except for in Texas, where there's a lot of delegates, where Cruz won. I don't really believe that uh, even against Hillary Clinton, who is, um, <laughs> you know, not the best candidate the Democrats could put forward. <laughs> but, but even against Hillary Clinton, all the Republicans currently still in the race would lose. And, and I still contend that Trump may be there just for that purpose. As I said in my last video, and I'll go through it rather briefly. You know, Trump is said to have been friends with the Clintons, to know the Clintons at least, and be acquainted with them. Possibly be friends as well. People have said this. So there's that speculation, allegation, whatever you want to call it. And, and also, um, Trump has said in the past that he is more like a Democrat than a Republican. And he's taking, taken many, he's taken many liberal, what you would call liberal, I guess, positions, uh, you know, in the past. Uh, things like for uh, some form of a health care plan, like single payer or, or something. Also, he was against the Iraq war, uh, if you recall. Maybe not for exactly the same reasons as a lot of the, the left was, but, but nonetheless. So for these reasons, I think that Trump is probably just part of something bigger that's intended to help Hillary, who can't get elected very easily unless she runs against a cartoon character like Trump or, you know, some candidate that's so horrible. That's the only way that she can get elected. So I think that's what that's about. More importantly, Bernie Sanders is, um, as some have said, he doesn't really... Um, He's not really a strong enough candidate in a sense. He doesn't really, um, you know, he doesn't really go on the offensive enough with Hillary Clinton. And he's not really fighting this election well enough, I guess. Not really, not really, uh, you know, he doesn't seem to be, at least. Yes, his speeches are kind of uh, impassioned once in a while, but he doesn't seem to be really, really in this as, as fully as he should be. And he lost every southern state, which <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Hillary Clinton wins the southern states. And um, I'm sure others have quite a lot to, uh, you know, of uh, kitchen sink philosophy and, and such uh, about that. But I'm not going to cover that, really. Hillary got a lot more delegates because a lot of these southern, southern states had larger population and more delegates, especially Texas. But Bernie did, keep in mind, win I think four, I believe four northern states, and he pretty much tied in Massachusetts. And, and some have said Massachusetts looks, I, I wouldn't say myself for sure, but there has been speculation that Massachusetts, there's something a little bit off about that. And we do know the past experience of the electronic voting machines and all this sort of thing. But at any rate, he tied pretty much in Massachusetts. And I'm sure that Bernie is counting delegates more than he's counting states. Although he's still behind in delegates, but there's a lot of states to come up still to vote. And California is certainly a very big state, as is New York. And they have yet to have primaries. So we'll see 
then. But to get to what I really wanted to talk about in this video very briefly as I don't want to make it too long, sort of outsider candidates have come, grassroots candidates, outsider candidates, Bernie Sanders being kind of an outsider within the establishment in a way, within the Democratic Party. They've come a long way. I remember the days of Kucinich. Kucinich couldn't, he didn't get this far. He wasn't going to win any primaries. So the word is getting around more easily and better. And I'm not saying Sanders is as good as Kucinich because he's not. Kucinich was far better than Sanders. But Sanders is far better than anything else on offer this season. We have to admit that. Even though some of his foreign policy is sort of naive and simplistic and even not very good. In some ways, Trump, although I'm told he did mouth some words about a no-fly zone in Syria, which is ridiculous. On the other hand, Trump has said he would go out of his way to get along with the Russians. Well, that's quite a good idea. The two most powerful countries in the world, you know, it's, it's kind of a better idea for a peaceful world if they're not, if they're not at odds with one another. And, of course, in Syria, where the Russians have a stake, to say the least. So, yes, the people, the grassroots, the uh, alternative thought has come a long way. And it's become, you know, half, it's, it's like half and half. with It's neck and neck with the mainstream. It's, it's, it's basically... Half the people don't like the establishment at all, and half the people really kind of want reforms but are willing to, um, you know, side with the establishment, it seems like. So that's pretty good. And in a few more years, we'll see if even more people, especially if conditions worsen, and I think that's what the government and the elite have been preparing for. We've heard these stories. We see the militarized police. Uh, a while back, a long time ago, there was a story about the brigade that was brought back from Iraq just in case for crowd control. In other words, we know they're worried about unrest because they know that they're destroying the economic, well, let's put it this way, the ability for people to survive economically in certainly in the United States, if not the entire West. So, that's my main point.